When I thought about this, I had a huge pit in my stomach, like thinking about going, you know? Um, I knew I had to go. Um, and I think about that pit now. And I think about like the stress I had about it now. And I think I must have known that I was gonna uh, see some things that um, I could not unsee. That's probably the best way to put it. One of the very interesting things about being here, I will say is on the one hand, I have, you know, among the Palestinians, uh, seen all sorts of analogs to our struggle, but I will tell you that I've also seen um, like an alternative timeline, if that makes any sense, for black Americans in watching um, the behavior of the Israeli state. I have been shocked by the simplicity of the brutality, the inhumanity, um, and oppression. I think there is great temptation when you are oppressed and you have been victimized and you have been brutalized and you have been subject to pogroms, genocide, and taking the tools of those who have oppressed you and, and, and using them and thinking that is the only way to secure your liberation. And um, it has to be avoided. It's not freedom. It's not freedom. Seeing little kids with their backpacks going through these turnstiles in, in Hebron just, I think, broke me. Seeing um, three kids that were probably between the ages of maybe eight and nine down to three coming home from school holding hands being questioned by a soldier. Um, there's no other memory for them except for this. And that for me was, I think, the most, one of the most gutting things uh, in addition to seeing Ethiopian uh, Israeli soldiers doing some of that uh, surveillance and enacting some of that violence. They are on the other side. They are walking on the other side. Okay. That is part of the Shuhada street over there. You can't go down that street? No, we cannot. Unfortunately, we cannot. Can they come down this street? Does yes, they they, no, the, our colleague, yeah, you mean? If a settler wanted to come this The settlers way? can come in any minute, of course. You can see them moving over there. You can see moving freely with the settler, with the soldier. And can they come down this street if they In any to? minute. Can any they can come here any time, so any time. Yes, yes. And you can't go down We down cannot over there, exactly. <laughs> and this is actually the... I mean, Hebron is obviously just a straight up analog for uh, Jim Crow and segregation. I mean, like again, you know, I, I went to, um, I was finishing up uh, the tour of Hebron, which was moving in and of itself. But I wanted to go back and support uh, one of the merchants who I told I would come back to, and there was a soldier, um, and he was black. He's black, and um, what couldn't have been any old in 2021. Huge gun, you know, about yay big, you know, handgun on the side and everything. And I, you know, I said, look, I just want to go over here and just, you know, support this merchant. And he said, what's your religion, bro? Um, and so when I talk about like the indefensible, like the idea that you can't walk down the street. You know, you know, because of your religion. Um, that's like straight up Jim Crow. We're driving now on a number of roads that were built and designed for settlers. And so if you look essentially in every direction, but mostly to the front, you'll see a system of walls and roads. We're cutting through Palestinian areas. All of these lands are owned by Palestinians. They're, this is Bejala and the road cuts straight through it, but it also isn't accessible to them. So this is what the walls are doing here. They're preventing people from this town to use the road that uses their lands, that essentially connects all the different settlements in the West Bank to each other and to Jerusalem. Those elements of, you know, lack of quote unquote equal rights or, um, you know, civil rights is actually one component of what is a very complicated um, and complex colonial structure that includes elements of settler colonialism, elements of apartheid, elements of, you know, um, ghettos like we saw in Eastern Europe during World War II, elements that are familiar from the afterlives of slavery, and that all of those things together, um, as well as the, the unique elements of, of the Nakba, come together to create a geopolitical structure where there are these parallels that I think should inspire solidarities from people all around the globe, but is um, also uniquely sinister and uniquely evil and uniquely violent um, towards the human spirit and towards the land uh, and towards ancestry and towards history. 
It's in the small details that, uh, that I have begun to understand the magnitude of this oppression, the small ways that your life and routine and predictability and your time is being taken away. I had no idea about that until I came here. Um, it's the small ways that the spirits of people are resisting, but the ways also that uh, the settlers and, and the Israeli authorities are trying to break people in tiny increments. Uh, that for me was astonishing. For me, it's been very powerful to hear Palestinian activists here say, not just, you know, please understand our struggle and be in solidarity with us, or please understand and go back and tell other people about it, but actually to say, these are global systems and they're harming us as they are harming you in a very literal material way, right? In terms of training, connections, funding, corporations. And what's been very powerful is to hear Palestinian folks draw those parallels and to say, also part of how you support our struggle here is to go home and, and fight for your own liberation as well. What sticks is just the thread of violence, but also the, the, the love that, that people have for their communities, um, for the memories of those communities. I see that as the geography that we are traveling across. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot.